Does atrial fibrillation cause heart failure? Does atrial fibrillation definitely weaken your heart and eventually cause you to die? Well, let's unpack this a little bit. So when people ask me this question as to, well, will I get congestive heart failure from atrial fibrillation? That depends. What is congestive heart failure? This is a condition where your underlying heart either has to be very weak or very stiff, such that it's not pumping adequately. So think of it as like a simple pump. If you have a mechanical pump and it's circulating water through the pipes, well, you've got an in pipe and you've got an out pipe and it, the pump is in the middle and it's circulating the water through the pipes. Well, if the pump is very weak, such that it can't pump enough fluid with each contraction, or it's very stiff where it's not filling up properly, then you're going to have less and less fluid in the out pipe and more and more fluid's gonna build up in the in pipe, trying to get into the weak or stiff pump. And as the pressure builds up from all that backlog of fluid building up on the in pipe, the pressures get so high enough, it can actually burst the pipes. Well, in your body, your heart is the pump right in the middle, and you have blood vessels that kind of circulate your blood and water. So when the pump is stiff or weak and it's not keeping up with the circulation, then the pressures of the blood and the fluid in your bloodstream back up in the in pipe and they get so high that water from your bloodstream called plasma actually leaks out into the surrounding spaces. And guess what? Your lungs are right next to that area. Your legs are next to that area because it's a big circle. And if you have fluid in your lungs or your legs, you're gonna feel short of breath and have swelling. And we call that congestive heart failure. And then that's where you are hospitalized and the doctors give you lots of water pills, lots of water medications to pee out that extra fluid. Because if you can get fluid out of your bloodstream and make the blood vessels underfilled, your body has the amazing ability to reabsorb fluid out of the lungs and the legs back into the bloodstream, back into the blood vessels to make up for that lost fluid. And now you're not in congestive heart failure, but as long as you still have a weak or stiff heart, you could go back into congestive heart failure. It's a condition you can go in and out of and that has to be treated. Does atrial fibrillation cause congestive heart failure? Well, AFib is an electrical rhythm problem. It's not a plumbing problem. It doesn't necessarily make your heart weak or stiff, but if you have a weak or stiff heart, and you also have atrial fibrillation, randomly waking up and making your heart go super fast under no control of you or your brain, well, obviously that can make your weak or stiff heart work less well. If your heart's going fast and it's weak or it's very stiff, it's not going to pump better, it's actually gonna pump worse. And so therefore you could trigger or be more likely to develop congestive heart failure if you have atrial fibrillation on top of a weak or underlying stiff heart. Plus, you also have to understand atrial fibrillation, these abnormal cells, when they wake up, they're sending out electricity super duper fast. That's why your heart goes at 130, 150, 160 beats per minute. But interestingly enough, it's getting a little bit more complicated, but there's four chambers in your heart. There's two upper chambers and two lower chambers, two atria, two ventricles. It's the ventricles that pump the blood out of your heart. When I say you have a weak or stiff heart, I'm talking about the ventricles in the bottom. The atria are just primer pumps. They just kind of help push the blood down to the bottom. So blood naturally flows through those top chambers into the bottom chambers to fill them. But right before the bottom chambers pump the blood out of your heart, the top chambers push the blood, contract and push the blood to the bottom chambers, and they do add an extra 20% of filling. So they're kind of like primer pumps that just kind of make sure the bottom chambers are fully filled before they pump the blood out of your heart. But they're not essential for life. If you weren't pumping with your atria, 70, 80% of the filling of the bottom chambers is just from passive flow. When you're in atrial fibrillation, top chambers of your heart are actually going, not at speeds of 120, 130 beats per minute, they're actually going at three to 400 beats per minute. They're actually quivering. They're not effectively pumping. Then people say, well, my atria is sending out signals at three or 400 beats per minute. Why don't my ventricles go at three, 400 beats per minute? Wouldn't I then just not pump blood? My heart walls would just be quivering and I would just keel over and die? Well, no, because the nerve, the electrical conduit that conducts electricity from those top chambers to the bottom, can't actually conduct at three or 400 beats per minute. They can only conduct at 100 to 160 beats per minute or less. That's why when you're in AFib, your heart rates in the ventricles aren't three, 400 beats per minute. There are 150, 160 beats per minute or less, which is like you exercising, not you keeling over and dying because your heart's not adequately pumping blood. But here's the thing, when you're in AFib, your ventricles are going fast like you're exercising, but the top chambers are going even faster and they're not adequately pumping. So you lose that 20, 30% filling 
from these primer pumps. So your bottom chambers are now only filling 70 to 80% with each heartbeat instead of the full 100%. And guess what? Once again, if you have a weak or stiff bottom chambers of your heart, they're not gonna like losing that 20% of filling and they're not going to like going at the rapid speed that the AFib is making it go at. And that's more reasons for them to not pump effectively and for you to go into congestive heart failure. So yes, it is very common that if you have an underlying heart problem, being either stiff or weak, and you go into AFib, losing that atrial filling, that atrial kick as we call it, and making your heart go super fast, you can more likely have more episodes of congestive heart failure. So if you want to have less congestive heart failure episodes in that situation, control your AFib keep you in normal rhythm, either with medications or procedures like an ablation to control your AFib adequately. But does AFib necessarily cause a weak or stiff heart? Yes, it can trigger congestive heart failure in somebody with a weak or stiff heart, but does it actually cause a weak or stiff heart? Generally speaking, no. If you have a completely normal strength heart, just going to AFib does not necessarily make the bottom chambers, the ventricles, become weak or stiff. So, in general, you can't just say, oh, I have AFib, so it's going to weaken the bottom chambers of my heart and I'm just going to die. No, there are plenty of people whose AFib has progressed over the years to the point where they're now in it 100% and we just kind of slow their heart rate down to a level that they tolerate and they're doing just fine. And they don't develop weak heart and they don't develop congestive heart failure from weak heart if they didn't already have it. And so no, AFib is not some death sentence that will definitely weaken your heart. Having said that, there is one situation where AFib could weaken the bottom chamber of your heart. It's a condition called tachycardic cardiomyopathy. And cardiomyopathy just meaning a weak heart. Tachycardic just means fast heart rate. If you're in AFib continuously, making the bottom chambers of your heart go super duper fast, usually it's gotta be at a speed of about 120 beats per minute or faster. If your heart's just going at 100 beats per minute or slower, no, you're not gonna have this problem. But if your heart's going kind of fast, almost like you running on a treadmill and getting your heart rate up, but continuous. You're an AFib, not just for a few minutes, not just for a few hours, not even for a day or two. We're talking about multiple days to weeks continuously in AFib at rate, heart rates of 115, 120 beats per minute or faster. Yes, that can definitely weaken your heart over time. Think about it. It's like your heart being told to exercise at an exercise speed, but never having a break. If we put you on a treadmill and had you exercise for the next five days continuously without a break, I think that's gonna hurt you and your heart. So the AFib can actually hurt your heart in that condition, it can weaken it. And that's what we call a tachycardic cardiomyopathy. This doesn't occur very often because usually people feel the symptoms of the rapid heart rate and they bring it to our attention well before something like this happens. But we do see it from time to time. And the good news is if that happens and your heart function, the bottom chambers of your heart, are directly weakened by this rapid rates in AFib over the course of days to weeks. If we aggressively control your AFib, if we get the speed slower or we actually get the AFib back to sleep or gone with a medication or an ablation and you're back in your normal rhythm, telling your heart to go to normal speed, I'd say most of the time that weakness of your heart actually resolves and will go back to normal strength. So this is actually a very treatable condition, but yes, can you weaken your heart with AFib? Yes, you can, but only under very specific circumstances. Most of the time, if your AFib is under control, speed-wise, or being suppressed or gotten rid of inflation, you will not develop a weakened heart from it. But if you already have a weakened heart or a stiff heart to begin with from other causes, going into AFib at rapid speeds and also losing that so-called atrial kick or the effect of the priming pumps can definitely trigger an episode of congestive heart failure. For everything atrial fibrillation related, please feel free to go to my website, drscottlee.com, where you're gonna find more resources and also can follow me on social media.